especially doing 35 interviews in an hour like that. Oh, yes, see, now we're, we're all, all in. Here. Excellent. <laughs> this is Jackie with All Access, and I'm here with Emma Rosa, and we are at Baltimore Soundstage uh, the day before Halloween. Yes. No costumes yet. Um, I don't know if all the fans out there know, but you guys have been around since 2006, quite a while. Yeah. Emma Rosa has, has been around since 2006. Despite a plethora of uh, lineup changes, what do you attribute to your band's longevity? This group of guys right here, a solid group of people that um, we've got along great since day one um, and created something together that we believe in and love. So, yeah page pretty early on I'd say so it was you know it's been easy to maintain that not easy <laughs> definitely not easy but it's been something that been is, it's been important to everyone to maintain I don't turn off my own phone I'm a genius um, so how would you describe the evolution of your sound from relativity to versus growth. just gonna keep yeah it's, it's growth and songwriting you know um, you want to take it uh, I think that I think it it just shows a long stream of maturity, um, from you know uh, growth is a good word, uh, but you know as as music as the musicians grow, so do their musical tastes, uh, and so it's going to reflect what you know the the musicians perform, and I think that's the perfect example is from two thousand six to now, it's it just shows the maturity in the music and what they've been influenced by. So, uh, what inspired writing on Versus? Who or what? Life. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. really for everyone. There's a lot of pieces. I mean, there's a, there's a year of everyone's life in there that we worked on. There's some songs that we had around for a while that have made it on the record, but then some that were just spur of the moment things that the band was feeling when we were in the studio. Um, it's definitely, I think everyone has a lot of pieces that they put into that record. And it was recorded here in Baltimore, correct? Just down the street, actually. Which studio? Uh, Salad Days. That's right. I always forget the name of it. Yeah, it is on Charles. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it is really right around the corner. Um, so how was writing versus different from your previous sessions? Bradley. Bradley. <laughs> they all blame you. Yeah, no. It, uh, I was just a more intricate part of the writing process uh, than any previous record that they had with vocalists. Um, I was more involved musically, uh, lyrically. And um, I think it brought it, I, I brought everyone, I, I, think, I think it kind of inspired everyone to, to write the songs more naturally. Um, and I, I use this word every time that we uh, get this question, but it's, it was super, really organic. Um, and that's just how, <clears throat> I mean, that's just how it felt when we were writing. You know, some songs, some songs didn't feel like that. Some songs just felt, you know, they had songs that were written before I had ever joined, and so those were harder to write to because I wasn't as much a part of them. Um, but then I think it's important that they're on the record to show the diversity that we have uh, when it comes to writing a song. Well said. Um, and I've talked, to, I've talked to Will before about the process uh, behind finding you and that it was uh, quite a long wait, but uh, how, how, how and when did you guys know that Bradley was the one? I, I, I'll say I knew it whenever I first met him, whenever I first came and saw him, uh, saw him sing, play along with the guys and stuff. I, I knew instantly that he was the right one for this band. Oh, sucks. We, we tried a bunch of singers. I mean, a lot of singers and a lot of people can sing and a lot of people are great singers, but really there's, there's a whole other quality to being a front man, to, to being in a band, to doing this as a whole thing. There's, there's this kind of else their thing you can't really put your finger on and it, w it was clear Bradley wasn't was had that I don't even know if he's fully discovered it and you know it's great to be able to watch him he's only one record in you know we're, by the time we get two or three and he really starts to hone in on exactly what he wants to do it's going to be awesome <laughs> I saw you guys play it was one of your earlier shows last March uh, at the Chameleon Club and already you guys definitely proved that you were uh, definitely unified um, you just released a video for People Like Me, We Just Don't Play. Uh, why I released a music video in 2014. It was fun. It's a, it was a, it's a performance video. And at the same time, like, you know, it is, 
uh, the four of us are the face of Emerosa now. Um, and so we want to make sure that we establish that, you know, with the fans and be recognizable. Um, we did a video for the song I'll Just Wait, which was much more, you know, it was it was more of a storyline. Um, it's a, you know, in my opinion, it's a beautiful song. We wanted to do something that was more uh, in, not, not necessarily in, old Emerosa, but something that was more uh, energetic and, and performance um, based. And I felt like it really represented the band really well. I mean, videos are still fun, you know, yeah. to, to do, to see, like I still watch music videos. Um, There's a place. Yeah, absolutely. Thank goodness for YouTube. <laughs> I, speaking of familiar faces, uh, that red fox has been on, is, is on the cover of uh, quite, most all of your uh, album covers. This record and the last record. Yeah. What does that red fox represent? It represents this group of guys right here. Um, that's the best way to explain it. You know, just like the name Memorosa represents this band right here. Um, the fox came about, and matured with us. You know, we we it was it was definitely a it was a conversation that came up so much in the time off of do we go back to the fox? Do we do we keep pushing forward with it but in a new way do we start over with another type of you know identity but it was really when we were coming up with album art and coming together it, it kept circling back to we should just do this and it i i love it it, it feels great uh, i'm still really happy with it and the last album art you know i the transition between the two it's great and speaking of starting over uh sorry folks it was a play on words i had to go there uh tell me about your collaboration with start and the beanies for breast cancer awareness that's a great question uh aaron from start has been a really close friend of mine for uh seven eight years now um and so he's always been really supportive of me and anything i've done uh, he was familiar with emerosa so uh, when emerosa and myself um became uh, became one he was um very very um uh, excited to work with us and then this opportunity came up and this tour with memphis mayfire and yellow card and they also have a collaboration beanie um uh and my uh <clears throat> um my mother she had cancer she's in remission now um so it's something that's very personable or personal to me um and uh, i know it was, i mean it's a great cause it's it was a really cool beanie uh, um awesome couple Aaron to work with really yeah he's an awesome guy very hard worker yeah. Um, it was just the perfect, um, just the perfect collaboration, in my opinion. Yeah, it was everything you wanted in a collaboration. We were on the same page with everything right from day one. So, well, between working with Start and collaborating with each other, stay tuned for much more from Emerosa. This is Jackie. Thanks to All Access and In the Key of Change. Am I doing this? Yeah. <laughs> I try.